Hi everyone, this is Jason Zak from Nathaniel School of Music. In this lesson, we are going to learn a few easy ways to help remember your chords by grouping them and combining them or comparing them with each other. And we are going to do it in a rather exhaustive way. We are going to do everything ranging from major, minor to the sevens, major seven, minor seven, uh, minor seven flat five, diminished seven. So pretty even the augmenteds and the suspended. So uh, do stay tuned till the very end. We are going to uh, we are going to look at not how to form them, which you probably already know, or you can watch a lot of the other videos which I have done on our YouTube channel on how you know you can intervillically form each of these chords. But in this lesson, it's more how you can remember them and use them a lot better by remembering just one simple thing that each set of what I am telling you, each set of chords or each set of uh, data which I'm going to give you are very related to each other. So if you find the relation or if you find what's similar, you know, between the two chords, then the naming and the usage and how you improvise and compose with this stuff will be a lot easier on the head and you can get the data out a lot quicker on your fingers because your mind already knows this stuff. It can interconnect two pieces together. Before we get started, it'll be awesome if you could consider hitting that subscribe button and hitting the bell icon for regular notifications. Also, my handwritten notes for this lesson as well as all the lessons we've been doing on YouTube and with, that we are going to continue to do on YouTube. The, the supplementary notes, the backing tracks, the MIDI files will all be on our Patreon page for just $5 a month. Do consider heading over there. Let's get cracking. So I'm going to start with suspensions or suspended chords. You would have come across them pretty often because they tend to resolve to their major and they can so easily also resolve to their minor. Okay, I've done a lot of videos on suspended chords. Do check, we'll leave a couple in the description. So do check them out. So suspended chords have an interesting property that first of all, there are two kinds of suspensions. There's sus4, which has a perfect fourth in them. That's C, F, G, one, perfect four, perfect five. Now the interesting thing here is when you invert this chord, when you invert C sus4, you're going to get F sus2. So C sus4 when inverted becomes F sus2. So it's a good way to package your suspended chords. A sus4 is another sus2 and they are separated by a perfect fourth apart, if you can remember that. So then if you take a D flat sus4 for example, what is D flat or C sharp's fourth, right? If you're a guitar player, it's usually the next string same fret. That's how you get your perfect fourths. But on the keyboard, you'll have to just remember it. So the circle of fifths can be a very good, helpful tool. So D flat or C sharp's perfect fourth would be F sharp. So C sharp or D flat sus four equals to, or is very similar to F sharp or G flat sus two. I repeat. C sharp or D flat sus4 equals to F sharp sus2 or F sharp or G flat sus2. Sus2 incidentally is where you have a, a root, a major second and a perfect fourth. So let's do build that again from the context of C. Let's start with a sus4. So C sus4 equals F sus2. What if we started with C sus2? C sus2. Now when you invert this chord, <clears throat> you're going to probably think to yourself, okay, maybe I should now shove the C on top. You get a very interesting sound called the quartal chord, which I'm going to cover very soon. So if I move this downward, if I take this G here and move this bottom, I'll get a G sus4. So C sus2 if you have to invert a sus2 chord, you would do the perfect fifth sus4. So what is C's perfect fifth? The answer would be G. C, D, E, F, G. So G sus4 happens to be C sus2. It's pretty easy to remember while C sus4 is equal to F sus2. 
sus4 to 2 when you convert it will have to be a perfect fourth movement while sus2 to sus4 will have to be a perfect fifth movement so c sus2 is g sus4 and coming to the third position so all three note structures or all three note chords or triads or any three note harmonic structure will have three shapes now this retains the quality of the chord if it's a major chord for instance c major you invert it you still get c major but that's the first inversion you invert that you still get c major it's a second inversion now the value or the the use case for these inversions is more to do with how you are accentuating the bass so if you play c major with like this it's still a good old c major but when you reinforce the bass it becomes a c slash e kind of sound right so this changes the context it makes the chord a lot more unstable even c over g is unstable it wants to resolve to the fifth usually or c over e c slash e this is a slash chord will want to resolve to the f and that's how slash chords come into being because you need to make the bass dominate the sound you're trying to change the listener's ear from the traditional triad c major is just c that it's driven by c it's a stable sound but when you change it with another note in the bass it becomes a slash chord okay coming back to suspension so the argument here is you have three shapes for every three note chord and four shapes for every four note chord which i'm going to come to shortly in the lecture So if you come back to the case of C sus4 you have C sus4 when you invert the guy you're going to get sus2 which is F sus2 now when you further invert it you're going to start with G and you get this open perfect fourth kind of voicing which again is very 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 easy to play on the guitar because perfect fourths are very close to each other Okay, so you get this open sound. So you could say that this is some variant of G seven sus four, but we have another name for this in the quartal department. We call this as a G quartal chord, or you can just say G capital Q. So what is a quartal chord? It's a root, perfect four, and a minor seventh or a dominant seventh interval. It is not. That's a also a quartal chord, but we give that as a. quartal plus because it has a major seventh up top and then there's another one called sharp 4q where the 4 is sharpened but i'm not going to deal with that we've done quartal chords in other videos so this would be g7 sus4 people tend to call it that uh you however you can also call this as g quartal so a g quartal chord would be 147 flat in terms of intervals so in conclusion a suspended chord can give you three chords if you know how to invert it and if you know what the inversions will become so c sus4 c f g in order will when you invert it it will become f g c in order so that's a sus2 f sus2 when you further invert that to the g starting it will be g c that's a c quartal and each of these flavors each of these chords tend to sound very different than each other but yet they have the same notes so you kind of get three different chords for the price of one set of three notes you know so so c sus4 f sus2 and g q or g quartal So that's about the suspended chord and its inversions if you will. Uh we don't study inversions of suspended chords and these other chords I I'm going to show you. Uh we probably should. Uh another nice chord which when inverted you should definitely figure this out because it'll help you learn that chord. It'll make your life easy for that chord. That is called as the augmented chord. So an augmented chord is built. Let me take this on the in the case of E augmented so root major third and augmented fifth you could also argue that it's a major third between the root and the third and another major third between the third and the augmented fifth what is augmented fifth again it's the perfect fifth going up a step 
that would have made it e major that that's now e augmented okay so this is an augmented chord so what happens when you invert e augmented when you invert e augmented it becomes another augmented chord namely g sharp augmented and if you invert g sharp augmented with c what do you get you get c augmented so c augmented is the same as e augmented is the same as g sharp augmented or a flat augmented so you may ask yourself how many augmented chords should i learn in life well if everything is a trio then you just have to learn four you have to learn four trios and probably practice them with maybe a simple drill maybe using triplets come back and maybe what i like to do is i like to arpeggiate in the right hand and block in the left hand block means play together so descend so that's a good augmented practice because you again you're getting 3 for the price of 1 so just remember all augmented chords are inversions of each other and before i move on to the other chord the circle of fifths will be pretty helpful because if you look at if you visualize for example c e and g sharp in the circle of fifths if you map them out geometrically if you first of all draw the circle well use a proper circle creating device or maybe a tablet with a good app gives giving a neat circle you'll realize that there is a c then there is an e so c g d a e that's 4 o'clock from c so you draw 4 o'clock and then you go to the g sharp which is the other side and then it joins back to c so what do you get you get an equilateral triangle so if you think about it any equilateral triangle in the circle of fifths assuming you draw it correctly will be an augmented shape and these augmented chords you don't have to just play them as augmented chords <clears throat> you can even play them as major chords separated by the augmented chord interval so this is what the film composers tend to do pretty often so for example you have just remember that c e and g sharp are your pillars those are your roots so i can now say i'll play a c major then go to e and play an e major then go to a flat and play a a flat major so it gives you a very very interesting sound a very movie theme like sound and see the distance or the gaps are an augmented gap so now you may be thinking what if i do this for minor chords with that augmented uh, connection works pretty well it's almost an instant way to create something very movie theme like separate them by an augmented and the next one i'm going to talk about the next chord which i would like you to learn the inversions of will again be very movie theme like that is called the diminished seventh chord so the augmented chord is separated by major thirds the diminished seventh chord or rather the diminished chord first let's begin with that will be let's i'm taking c as the base minor third and another minor third so two minor thirds now to finish the puzzle you can add a third minor third and you create a diminished seventh chord now diminished seventh chords are exactly like augmented chords in fact we call diminished seventh chords and augmented chords as the family being symmetric chords symmetric meaning when you flip them around they pretty much be behave the same so diminished seventh which is c diminished seventh how do we form it again c e flat f sharp a all minor thirds Now when you invert C diminished 7th you're going to get the next roots diminished 7th namely E flat diminished 7th when you invert that you're going to get F sharp diminished 7th when you invert that you'll get an A diminished 7th and now if you look at the circle of fifths the equilateral triangle works for augmented chords for these intervals for the diminished 7th or the minor third movement 
C to E flat to F sharp to A. They are all minor thirds apart. So if you map out the shape, you will get a square or you will get a diamond. You will basically get four corners. So because a diminished seventh has four. So if you visualize the circle of fifths, maybe maintain a page in your book and or maybe use the same page and have different colors for each of the squares or diamond shapes. You will just need three diamonds basically or three squares and you have conquered the diminished seventh uh, voicing and the diminished seventh is a very important chord in music we use it a lot to connect from point to point so if you take c diminished seventh very similar to all those four they all have the same texture the same flavor so you don't so how many diminished seventh chords do you have to actually remember well three groups or three families of four augmented four families of three because the augmented chord has three notes so diminished seventh there we go now the diminished seventh chord has a lot of uses one uh, which is which is where i want this lesson to drift towards so we've covered suspended chords inverted i've showed you augmented chords when inverted diminished chords also when inverted remember you'll have four diminished seventh chords for the price of one now there's more you can do with diminished seventh chords. So check this out. So if I play C diminished seventh or E flat diminished seventh or F sharp diminished seventh or A diminished seventh, they're all inversions of each other. So I'm just going to pick maybe A diminished seventh. I could have picked any of the other three. Now you can ask yourself, can this form a dominant seventh chord with some other root than any of these notes right now? So you, you, all you have to do is ask yourself, okay, <clears throat> there is a diminished shape in here. There's a diminished shape in here, isn't it? So what is a dominant seventh chord? It's a root and then a diminished chord. So forming, let's say in this case, F seventh. If I play A diminished in my right hand and F in the bass, you've got yourself an F seventh sound. Okay. So A diminished with an F bass, bang, you've already got a dominant 7th chord. And here's what's cool. Remember, you come back to the diminished 7th flavor. You play the whole 4-note structure. Now you find what will make the diminished 7th dominant. That'll be F. And you've got yourself an F7 flat 9 chord instantly. And here's what's really cool. You can go up a tritone and this is what we call as tritone substitution or tritone movement in music. You just take a tritone from F. What is a tritone? Perfect 5 minus 1. So F to C is a perfect 5 minus 1 is B. And now you keep your right hand shape the same and just play B. You got yourself a B7 flat 9 now. So that one diminished seventh chord is now giving you many dominant seventh chords separated a tritone apart, right? So I can take an F dominant seventh and you get a lot of options, really. You can even get an A flat dominant seventh. All you have to do is pretty much ask yourself in this shape, what, what note in the bass would form a major third with respect to A. So A is here. What note in the bass would form a major third? The answer is F. But then you can also ask yourself, what note will form a major third with respect to C? Because C is also part of this symmetric chord, isn't it? Just for uh, hearing clarity, I'm going to invert it because I can. I'll do a C diminished seventh. Now, what note in the bass will form a major third with respect to C diminished 7? The answer would be A flat. And what's this chord? A flat, uh, A, A flat 7 flat 9. A flat dominant 7 flat 9. Now, I want to re-invert it here. And now you ask yourself, what note will form a major third with respect to D sharp or E flat? The answer would be B, isn't it? Now if I invert it further, I get F sharp diminished 7. Now you ask yourself, what chord will make it 
A, d- a dominant seventh. Well, what note will form a major third with respect to the F sharp? So I get all these dominant seventh chords. I'm getting a, an F seventh. Right? Then I'm getting an A flat seventh. Then I'm getting a B seventh. And then finally I'm getting a D seventh. And there's something even more weirdly cool about what just happened. You're playing a diminished seventh, A diminished seventh in the right hand. And you're forming another diminished seventh chord in the left hand. So the diminished seventh chords are probably sitting on top of everything music has to offer. Things like the diminished seventh chord, forming diminished scales, symmetric scales like the whole tone scale. Uh, the circle of fifths. These are concepts which go way beyond scales. They've started scales. So you might want to look into some of these more symmetric concepts as you move forward because even if you're a beginner or even if you're new to the piano, it'll make your life easy. This is not just for piano, by the way. This is more of a general music uh, theory kind of uh, tutorial. So as, as long as you know how chords are linked with each other, how similar chords are, you, you'll you make your life a lot more easier. You'll not have to deal with 12 versions of every chord and then shapes, voicings. You'd rather group them and package them together and the circle of fifths is a great friend. The diminished seventh is a very good chord. You have to study that. We leave you a video in the description with some exhaustive study on the diminished seventh chord and how you can compare it with the next chord that I'm going to teach you in this lecture, the minor seven flat five, also known as the half diminished chord. So on that note, let's now move on to the last bit of this lesson to hopefully have covered every single chord, mainstream chord out there. Let's look at the sixth chords and the seventh chords, okay, in more detail. What if I told you that every major sixth chord is a minor 7th chord. That's a weird thing to say. I'm going to prove that. And what if I told you that every minor 6th chord is a minor 7th flat 5 chord? Very important to know this for a lot of harmonic movement possibilities. So if you take, let's say, F major 6th. What's a major 6th chord? F major with a major 6th, namely D on top. Very different than a major 7th, which is there. It's a major 7th on top. <clears throat> F major plus D. Major 6th. Now the major 6th note, you just tell yourself this one thing. The major 6th note from my root is also the relative minor. Now this is where the term terms and get a bit confusing. You have to understand that to form a relative minor from any major, you just go up a 6th. And what is the 6th? Major 6th. So you have minor formed with major 6th. Major 6th is the interval between the root and the relative minor's root. Example, F whose relative minor is D. So if you take F major, take D minor, they have the same notes and the same key signature when we notate them, right? So you need to understand when you play an F major 6th, The major 6th is nothing but the relative minor interval. So D, D, if you now start this chord from D, invert it rather, and start the chord from D, I'm just going to move the D from the top, bottom. This is impossible to do, so I'm just going to rewire my fingers. That's F major 6th and D minor 7th. You find F major 6th is a very grand kind of positive, vibrant, bright kind of sound while D minor 7th is a more calm, melancholic, pensive sound because the intervals got restructured around the new root which is D which is pretty much why you feel a minor scale different than a major not because the scale sounds sad it's because the intervals are sad or the intervals are different And when are the intervals of anything going to change? When you alter the root, the bass, the lowest frequency that you're hearing at the current moment. So if you take F major 6th, 
you just have to remember the major sixth is its minor seventh so minor seventh chord so f major sixth is d minor seventh f major sixth is d minor seventh let's do this with a couple more options maybe e flat major sixth e flat is a three flat scale what is its relative minor c so e flat major sixth is c minor seventh similarly c major sixth is a minor seventh it's good to practice this exercise uh, similarly things like d flat major sixth which i'm playing right now b flat becomes the b flat minor seventh e major six c sharp becomes the c sharp minor seven it's a good way to gang up those two chords which are very common in music usage right uh then we have the minor sixth chord so if you take uh, f minor sixth chord i really love to use you can check out a playlist in in the description in the description we leave you with that uh, it's called my favorite chords basically all the chords that i use in my own compositions on a almost day to day basis the stuff which i really love to work with some of them are very mysterious and very interesting especially when you first listen to it you might even think those chords are wrong those are the chords which i tend to enjoy so do check out my favorite chords playlist so let's take f minor 6 all you need to do is ask yourself the same question f minor 6 when you invert it you invert it to its relative minor which is d but now when you play the inverted chord it doesn't form a minor 7th it forms a minor 7th flat 5 which is also known as a half diminished chord we write it with a d and a phi the greek symbol phi is used to denote this chord because it's a rather weird long name minor 7th flat 5 well in theory it's quite easy to understand it's a minor 7th flat 5 with a minor chord minor bass minor third So in other words F minor 6 is equal to D minor 7 flat 5 So it gives you a harmony also a lot of harmonic movement for example I'm combining both those chords F minor 6 and then D minor 7 flat 5 because I wanted that tune Na 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 na. Gives your harmony a lot of motion and inspires the melody for sure. Right, guys. So in this particular lesson, we've figured out five ways to gang up or to package your chords a bit better and use them hopefully a lot more efficiently as musicians. we looked at the suspended chords and their inversions sus4 is also a sus2 is also a quartal then we said augmented chords are carbon copies of each other diminished seventh chords are carbon copies of each other and diminished seventh chords you can use that to make other chords better for your brain by adding the root which forms a dominant seventh with it, with respect to that And then last but not least we looked at the 6th and 7th correlations. A major 6th happens to be a minor 7th and a minor 6th happens to be a minor 7th flat 5. You can use tools like the circle of fifths with some visually appealing geometric shapes. You can make a neat set of notes for yourself. You can study my notes, don't just look at it, try to write it yourself. And definitely an absolute no to google images or you know buying these sort of charts which you stick in your room and stare at it when you wake up no magic of any sort will happen you have to use this stuff practice it stare at it every day yes but stare at it and use it only when you use it compose do exercises with this content will it start appealing to you number 1 because the sound has to get into your system you have to enjoy the sound 
and i feel once you enjoy the sound you'll use it more and you'll remember it better so i hope you found the lesson useful if you did it will be nice if you can leave us a comment hit the like button if you liked the lesson and uh, also if you haven't already do consider hitting the subscribe button turn on that bell for regular notifications and the patreon channel will give you access to my handwritten notes midi files backing tracks and many more content for all of our youtube videos and lastly if you'd like to do a course at nathaniel school of music probably uh, cover the basics of guitar Uh, learn how to sing with different styles of singing learn the piano learn do live classes and not just these you know youtube videos you can consider filling up a form in our description or heading over to nathanielschool.com and one of our course advisors will reach you shortly thanks a ton for watching the video cheers